Good morning. Welcome to Morning Video Devotional. Uh, I've got a book today that I pulled off the shelf that I'd like to use called The Business of Heaven. And what it is is daily readings from C.S. Lewis. It's taken from quite a few of his writings over time, 29 different writings, and some of those writings have lots of articles within them. So it takes just a little, just a page of C.S. Lewis and kind of spreads it out over the year. And this is an interesting one. It's not scheduled for today, but I just thought it was interesting, <clears throat> called Missionaries in Outer Space. C.S. Lewis was a fan of science fiction, and he actually wrote a science fiction trilogy called the Space Trilogy that imagines uh, a person first going to Mars, even though it's called something different by the people on Mars or the creatures on Mars, and then to Venus, and then those people those people sending things here. Very, very interesting, but it's called the Space Trilogy. And uh, it, it appears at first not to be about theology, but it turns out to be by the end of the first book. So anyway, this is him imagining what would happen if we discovered life on other planets and we tried to evangelize them. Would that be good or bad or even necessary? So here is... C.S. Lewis from an article called Religion and Rocketry from 1960. <clears throat> Can even missionaries be trusted? Gun and gospel have been horribly combined in the past. The missionary's holy desire to save souls has not always been kept quite distinct from the arrogant desire, the busybody's itch, to, as he calls it, civilize the, as he calls them, natives. Would all our missionaries recognize an unfallen race if they met it? Could they? Would they continue to press upon creatures that did not need to be saved, that plan of salvation which God has appointed to man? Would they denounce as sins merely differences of behavior, which the spiritual and biological history of these strange creatures fully justified, and which God himself had blessed? Would they try to teach those from whom they had better learn? I do not know. What I do know is that here and now, as our only possible practical preparation for such a meeting, you and I should resolve to stand firm against all exploitation and all theological imperialism. It will not be fun. We shall be called traitors to our own species. We shall be hated of almost all men, even some religious men. And we must not give back one single inch. We shall probably fail, but let us go down fighting for the right side. Our loyalty is not due to our species, but to God. Those who are or, or can become his sons are our real brothers, even if they have shells or tusks. It is spiritual, not biological kinship that counts. If I remember rightly, St. Augustine raised a question about the theological position of satyrs, monopods, and other semi-human creatures. He decided it could wait until we knew if there were any. Soak in this. He uses as a jumping off point the idea of alien species and could they be converted to the faith and really should they? Would they need to be? We all have fallen short of the sin and fallen short of the glory of God, but could there be in the rest of the universe, people who never disobeyed God. People who don't need to be saved because they live in a different reality. <laughs> he uses that as a jumping off point to say, we don't know if there are other, other life in other places, but let's concentrate first on here and now and make sure there's no exploitation happening now. Make sure there's no, in the name of religion, so-called civilization that forces our preferences on people in the name of evangelism. Let's make sure we recognize the true spiritual kinship that can exist between human beings because we don't do such a great job of that. Paul wrote in the book of Galatians about another time when people of faith had trouble recognizing the spirituality of others, people who, even though they were from this planet, seemed alien and maybe less than human. And what was that group that seemed so hard to accept for the early church? us, Gentiles. Listen to Paul from Galatians chapter 3. Understand then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. 
Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. So those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. How many times have we looked at others different than us and thought that they were less than human? That's what racism is about. That's what classism is about. People who live differently, people who have fewer resources, or even the super rich, people who live so differently. Are, are we really the same creature? Are people of the same race the same creature? People have wondered about people with different sexualities. Are, are they really human? We would never say that, but we act as if they're so different, they're not one of us. And yet the gospel breaks down all barriers. Among humankind, and we don't know if there's anybody else to worry about yet, but among humankind, we are all descended from the same Creator. We all have the same Savior, and we all need the same Savior. Can we allow God to uncover our eyes, to take off all these human filters, and see every person as fully human, fully beloved, and a potential sibling. Let's pray. Lord, sometimes when we open the window of your word, it shows us a bigger view than we can take in all at once. It changes our small, narrow vision into something much, much broader. Give us the courage to let our hearts and our minds and our vision be as wide as yours. We ask it, dear Jesus, in your name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us for this morning devotional, and I hope you'll join us again soon.